Louisiana, USA, September 12th, 2024. The winds from the northern eye wall of Francine are cranking here in Morgan's. Hurricane Francine struck the Louisiana coast Wednesday evening as a dangerous Category 2 storm that rapidly knocked out electricity to more than 100,000 customers and threatened widespread flooding as it sent a potentially deadly storm surge rushing inland along the northern U.S. Gulf Coast. The National Hurricane Center announced at 4 p.m. CDT that Francine made landfall in Terrebonne Parish, about 30 miles southwest of Morgan City, packing maximum sustained winds near 100 miles per hour. The hurricane crashed into a fragile coastal region that hasn't fully recovered from a series of devastating hurricanes in 2020 and 2021, Morgan City Fire Chief Alvin Cockerham said. The hurricane's arrival quickly flooded streets, snapped power lines, and sent tree limbs crashing down. TV news broadcasts from Louisiana's coastal communities showed waves from nearby lakes, rivers, and gulf waters thrashing sea walls. Water poured into city streets and neighborhoods amid blinding downpours. Oak and cypress trees leaned in the wind, and some utility poles swayed back and forth. Power outages in Louisiana exceeded 109,000, spreading across a wide area of southeast Louisiana. The hardest hit by the blackouts was Terrebonne Parish, near where the storm's center hit land, as well as neighboring St. Mary Parish, which includes Morgan City. The National Hurricane Center urged South Louisiana residents to take shelter for the night as the hurricane moved to the northeast at 17 miles per hour. That included New Orleans, where forecasters said the storm's eye could pass through. Francine drew fuel from exceedingly warm Gulf of Mexico waters, strengthening from a Category 1 to a Category 2 storm hours before landfall, the National Hurricane Center said. Category 2. Hurricanes are classified as having winds of between 96 to 110 miles per hour that are capable of extensive damage. Louisiana Gov. Jeff Landry also urged residents to stay off the roads and stay home. He said the National Guard would fan out to parishes impacted by Francine. They have food, water, nearly 400 high-water vehicles, about 100 boats and 50 helicopters to respond to the storm, including for possible search and rescue operations. President Joe Biden granted an emergency declaration to help Louisiana secure expedited federal money and assistance. Landry and Mississippi Gov. Tate Reeves also declared states of emergency, authorizing them to quickly free up resources for disaster assistance. A hurricane warning was in effect along the Louisiana coast from Cameron East to Grand Isle, about 50 miles south of New Orleans, according to the Miami-based Hurricane Center. A storm surge warning stretched from the Mississippi-Alabama border to the Alabama-Florida border. The Mississippi Emergency Management Agency said it distributed more than 100,000 sandbags to the southern part of the state. And the Department of Education reported several school district closures for Wednesday and Thursday. Bands of heavy rain began pelting New Orleans on Wednesday morning. The city's historic streetcars that roll on South Carrollton Avenue had to ease past cars parked next to the tracks on a grassy median where their owners hoped to avoid street flooding. Francine became the sixth named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season. Much of Louisiana and Mississippi could get four to eight inches of rain, with the possibility of 12 inches in some spots, said Brad Reinhardt, a senior hurricane specialist at the Hurricane Center. Francine's storm surge on the Louisiana coast was forecast to reach as much as 10 feet from Cameron to Port Fourchon and into Vermilion Bay, forecasters said, adding tornado watches also have been posted over a large area of South Louisiana and neighboring Mississippi as the storm heads inland. The Hurricane Center said parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle 
were at risk of considerable flash and urban flooding incoming. The Lower Mississippi Valley and Lower Tennessee Valley could experience flooding later in the week as the disbanding storm's considerable remnants sweep northward across several states in the coming days.